Hey everyone, this is Sunglass Rob from Sport RX, and I'm here with my good friend Stefan Rock, works at California Bicycle here in San Diego, California. And we got a special guest, Phil Metz from Skills with Phil, uh, professional downhill racer and YouTube extraordinaire. Yeah, that's a good way to put yeah, it. Yeah, and uh, Stefan's also a professional cross country right, racer. That's right, yeah. And we've been, fast we're, here. We're, we're trying to ask, answer some questions that people have been asking about mountain bikes. I'm a little bit newer of a rider. I, I know a little bit of things, but you guys are like a thousand times more experienced in every angle. And I know Stefan knows a lot about gear. You worked in bike shops for like, what, 15 years yeah, or 15 so? Years, yeah. So the question is tubeless versus tubes. I think the obvious answer is tubeless, but I kind of want to just have a discussion, hear you guys talk about it, and if you want to go tubeless, like, what do you need to do? Yeah, 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 definitely. So, um, you know, the, the biggest thing that I get asked about really is a lot of it has to do with tire pressure and ride quality. And that's really why, you know, on the high-end side of things, you're going to tubeless. It's going to increase your traction. You're going to be able to run a lower pressure. Um, tire's going to flatten out on the trail, absorb a lot more of the terrain and just, yeah, increase control, increase comfort as well for you. So really in the long run, as you progress with the sport, I highly recommend you transition over to a tubeless setup. Um, Phil, what do you think? Yeah, so I actually, um, I was a long time uh, tubeless holdout. I didn't want to go to it because I didn't- You were fighting it. Yeah, I, I didn't have a compressor and um, you know, like tubeless at the time was a little bit harder to set up. Not all the rims were perfectly set up for tubeless, but as technology got better, it got just much easier to install. Um, so I, I think when you first start out, I wouldn't worry too much, but I think once you start getting into the sport, that's when you might want to start thinking about transitioning over to tubeless. Um, and investing in maybe a compressor and some of the things you might need to make your life a little bit easier with the process. Yeah. But or you can just always go to the bike shop like me and let the guys right. do it. Well, I, I, I'm <laughs> glad you brought that up because actually I think the, the most daunting thing about it is actually the, the setup of tubeless. You know, people are just kind of confused about it. Um, it's not as simple as just putting a tube you know, yeah, into, you, your, into your tires. You, first so. you need uh, tubeless ready rims, right? That's and right. And tires, you can't just... That's right. Not everything is tubeless ready. Yeah, I mean, th there are ways to make them tubeless ready, but it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. So um, m most rims do come uh, standard for tubeless ready now with rim tape and whatnot. And I just want to step back. One other thing I think is super important about tubeless. To me, the most important factor is less flats. Mm -hmm. It's like significantly, That's right? That's a very good point. It's like yes. significantly less flats. Absolutely. I do think you get better ride quality. There's definitely a lot of other benefits, but less flats is just, it's like amazing. I think in a year and a half, I've gotten like three or four flats. I mean, and I and I ride pretty hard and I don't always do the tire pressure correctly. So I think they've all been my fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like most things, they're all Rob's fault. Um, so if you decide to go tubeless, what are some things you need to do? And, and like, what's the what's the next step once you like, yes, I want to go tubeless? Yeah, so the, the first thing is uh, either having a tubeless specific wheel, which, you know, like Phil said, most wheels nowadays are, are pretty much all tubeless ready. Um, you need a tubeless rim strip on there. And basically that's gonna cover up the spoke holes so you don't have any air leaking through there. You'll need to get a tubeless valve, which we have right here. Um, and then some kind of sealant, okay? Uh, my, I've been using stands for a long time. It's kind of a go-to by a lot of people. Uh, you know, there's other brands out there. Orange Seals is really great. It's a little thicker, um, tends to seal up a little, a little bit better. Um, so what you'll wanna do is set up the valve into your rim put half of your tire on and then pour some of the sealant in there. Generally about eight ounces of sealant is good. And uh, that will last you two to three months depending. I mean, one big mistake I see people make is they always, they ride six months, they don't have any sealant in there, it's completely dried out, yeah. they get a flat. Um, there's nothing left. There's nothing left, yeah. yeah. So you all also wanna maintain the fluid levels, you know, as, as far as the sealant in your tire, make sure how, that you have How often do you ounces. usually check and how do you check? So I will actually, I mean, one simple way you can do is take your wheel off and actually shake your wheel and listen for that sealant in there. Um, but over a two month period, you're gonna notice a lot of it dries out. So I would just say every two months to be on the safe side, throw in four ounces of sealant, you know? I mean, it's that easy. You can either- If you're riding often, I mean. Especially if you're yeah, riding often, yeah. yeah, definitely. There's a few ways you can do that. Um, you can actually, it is a little bit of a pain in the butt to seat the tire onto the rim, right? So what you can do is pour sealant directly through the valve core. 
Um, or you can actually pop off the tire and put sealant in that way too and so seal it. So you can actually remove that little piece from the actual valve um, with right. a special tool and makes it easier. Or you can do it by accident if you're <laughs> 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 so, yes, Wait yeah. a second, why do I have this? It goes back on, but yeah. <laughs> it does, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a little tool that um, actually like this, this one will have it here and it's called a valve core remover and this becomes a hollow tube and you yeah, can just so put your sealant I, through there. I think kind of the idea is help people decide if they should go tubeless, what tubeless means. And I think we've decided, I think all three of us are big fans of tubeless. Um, it's less flats, it's a more comfortable ride. You can go less tire pressure. It's less flats. Did I mention that it's yeah, less flats? Yeah, it's less flats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think like, you hit that point. I don't like getting a flat. One thing that some people are concerned about is if you do happen to get a flat and you are running uh, tubeless and it didn't seal, what do you do? And I'll tell you, if I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. I have the least amount of technical skills out of anybody I've ever ridden with. Um, you basically change you change it like as if you had a tube. You have to take the little valve out and then you, you squeak out all the fluid that's left in there, if there happens to be any left in there, and then you just throw a tube in and you uh, continue on your way. So it's not that complicated. I think that scares some people, but I'm like the least mechanically inclined person. So I don't think that should scare you away um, I would definitely recommend anyone watching this video to go ahead and get tubeless um, if you have any more questions about the topic please leave it in the comment section if we at Sport RX don't know the answer we'll ask a couple of guys that do know the answer we do get back to all the comments um, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel if this video was helpful like it if you want to follow Stefan on Instagram it's at Swiss Mountain Biker and Mountain Bikers MTN MTN so S-W-I-S-S-M-T-N -S -S Biker and Phil's at uh, Phil Metz, but just uh, do a quick Google search of Skills with Phil and you should be able to find me almost anywhere. Yeah, uh, Phil's YouTube channel is amazing. There's amazing tutorials and he's just a really rad guy to watch ride and really fun and his vlogs are amazing. So uh, if you haven't already subscribed to Skills with Phil, I would highly recommend you do that right now. Later. <laughs>